Hi everyone, welcome to this virtual college fair. Um, my name is Anna. I just wanna go over a few housekeeping things before we get started. Um, so just note that if you would like to ask a question, feel free to use the Q&A button um, so that way the different reps can answer your questions directly. Um, if you uh, can mute and turn off your video, that'd be great. Just know that your panelists can't see or hear you because this is a webinar. Um, if you'd like, you can sign up for more sessions um, following this one and please do note that there will be a recording available for the session um, after this is completed. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, Florida State to get us started. Well, welcome and good evening, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Uh, so my name is Mallory and I am Florida State University's Regional Admission Counselor for Southeast Florida. Uh, I'm joined by Kylie tonight, one of our juniors, who will be assisting me in the Q&A feature throughout the session. I'm looking forward to sharing some information about Florida State with you today. I'll primarily be focused on admissions, so we'll go through the application process, some financial information, and the admissions timeline, as well as some brief information about student life. So let's jump right in with some facts. Um, Florida State University is a top 20 public university nationally. We have a 95% retention rate, which means that students who come to FSU want to stay here. We are located in the state capital, Tallahassee. Coming from South Florida, that means you get to experience some seasons and have more of that small college town feeling while still benefiting from in-state tuition. We have about 40,000 students on campus. And although that may seem like a large number, I wanna highlight our student faculty ratio and mentioned that 60% of our undergraduate classes have less than 20 students. It's a great combination because it means you have all the opportunities of a large university with diverse program offerings while still being able to develop personal relationships with professors and peers for that close community feeling in your interest area. So I'm gonna recommend getting familiar with our website, admissions.fsu.edu, which is gonna be a helpful resource for additional information throughout your college application process. Our application can be broken down into four simple steps. Step one is to submit your initial application through either the Common App Coalition application or apply directly through the university website. Our application usually goes live in August. We do not have a preference for which application you submit, just that you select and submit only one. The options are there for your convenience. Step two is to create your SAR, which is your self-reported student academic record. In other words, an electronic version of your transcripts. Step three is to complete and submit additional documents and information via your application status check. This is where you will link your SAR and self-report all test scores. The state university system in Florida was not test optional this year, and we do anticipate requiring test scores again next year. For those of you that are able to test on multiple occasions, FSU does super score your results. And the status check is also where you will upload your optional but highly recommended essay and resume. Step four is to complete the residency declaration form for tuition purposes. And once you have completed those four steps, your application will be considered complete and ready for review. So let's talk timeline. The dates I mentioned will be this year's deadlines, but typically stay pretty similar year to year. For our juniors, we'll be announcing next year's dates later this spring, so keep an eye on that. Our application opened in August for current high school seniors. December 1st was our priority deadline this year. If students completed an application by the priority deadline, they received a non-binding admissions decision last week via the application status check. If an application is submitted after the priority deadline, the student will receive a decision on a rolling basis after initial decisions are released. With over 60,000 applications received, we always recommend aiming to have a completed application by the priority deadline, as it's not just for admissions, but the priority deadline for scholarships, the honors program, and housing as well. So now that you've completed an application, it's time for us to take a look. Our review process is holistic, meaning we look at the whole student, and there is not one single factor that will guarantee admission. Of course, your academics are gonna be key. We're gonna look at your grades, strength of curriculum, your senior schedule, test scores. Your essay and resume are optional, but highly recommended. The essay is a chance for you to tell us who you are outside the classroom and for us to get to know you. On your resume, you're gonna to wanna to list any volunteer work, clubs, sports, part-time jobs. We're looking to get a sense of who you are and how you'd fit into the FSU campus community. 
Landscape data provides us with some information about your school and what resources and courses were available to you in your area. We're also gonna consider any life challenges that students have faced. We wanna make sure we're considering the student in their context and how all those factors come together when we review an application. The Florida State University is a top 10 best value institution and 50% of our students graduate debt-free. The numbers that you see on screen is a total annual cost based on 15 credit hours in both the fall and spring semester. The values for housing and meal plan are based on the most popular options. And finally, the estimate for books and supplies, which is gonna vary by student depending on your courses and textbook selections. Altogether, the total estimated cost of attending FSU for in-state students is $18,000 per year, and that's before any financial aid, scholarships, Bright Futures, Florida prepaid. We highly encourage all applicants to complete the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA, which is gonna give you access to federal grants, loans, and work study. So we've talked plenty about the journey to Florida State, so let's talk about life as a knoll. The majority of our on-campus housing is suite style. Our suites are gonna be two bedrooms that share a bathroom with two students per bedroom. We have 28 dining locations on campus. The Suwannee room is pictured here and is one of two central dining halls that are gonna be that traditional college, all you care to eat style. Dining options on campus have plenty of variety and even include brand names like Einstein Bagel, Starbucks, and campus favorite Chick-fil-A. It's easy to get involved with over 700 clubs and organizations on campus, from student government and pre-professional societies to dance marathon and relay for life, to the less traditional Quidditch team or on-campus circus, our students are able to connect over similar interests and discover something new. Campus Rec is home to intramural sport leagues, the Leech, our on-campus gym with fitness classes, and the Reservation, our off-campus lakefront property where students can paddle on the water, play some beach volleyball, or even hit the ropes course. All of our on-campus activities are free to students with their FSU ID, which makes it easy to try something new and get involved. If you have any questions at any time during your application process, please get in contact with our office. We're always happy to help. You can reach us by email at admissions at fsu.edu or check out our website and follow us on social media at FSU Admissions. We have virtual events available at visit.fsu.edu, such as our live talking tour where current students will share their FSU story and answer any questions you may have about campus and student life. We do some student panel Q and A's as well as some on-demand virtual tours of campus and housing. Kylie and I will be available for the remainder of the session if you have any questions. So thank you again for joining us this evening and go Knowles. Thank you, Mallory. Now we're gonna hand it over to University of Alabama. Thank you. I'm not sure if I was having um, internet problems or it went through before, so I blocked out for a minute. Uh, but I'll just go at right ahead and jump in, guys. Uh, here at the University of Alabama, legends are made every day. From the athletic fields to the research labs, there's a range of opportunities available to you all at Alabama. Do you guys know that Alabama is consistently a leader in enrollment of national merit finalists, and we're currently ranked fifth in the country? or that Alabama is number one in the SEC and number two in the country in the number of internship placements, or that for the fifth consecutive year, the Alabama robotics team has won NASA, NASA's grand prize in the robotics mining competition. This is just a little bit of a glimpse into the accomplishments of the students at the University of Alabama and what can lie ahead for you in the future. At Alabama, we were founded in 1831 and almost 60% of our students are from outside the state of Alabama. Our total enrollment has grown to over 38,000, with just at right at about 6,700 students in our freshman class. So in addition to the benefits of a large research institution, Alabama maintains a small campus feel with a 23 to one student teacher ratio and over 200 different academic programs and majors. This combined with a diverse student population gives us a big enough yet small enough place for you to discover your legendary path. And there's so many different ways to get involved on campus. We have over 600 different student organizations. So if you're interested in it, University of Alabama probably has it. Alabama student organizations range from Greek life to campus ministries, honor societies, professional associations, and intramural sports. Let's talk about community service. 
Last year, our students at Bama donated over a million hours in community service to the local community. So if you're ready to become a legend at Bama, um, our application process is very straightforward. You apply online at our institutional, web institutional website at apply.ua.edu. That will become available in July. And this year for the first year, Alabama will also be on the common application. So that is also an option for you. There's a $40 application fee and we do require an official high school transcript to be sent. In fall 2021, Alabama was or is test optional. Um, and we are working really hard to make sure that happens again next year. We do not have a firm announcement about that yet, but we're making sure to do everything we can to make an education at the University of Alabama as accessible to as many people as we can. We also work really hard to make the out-of-state experience an affordable option by rewarding academic excellence. Approximately 40% of our students qualify for automatic merit-based scholarships. Out-of-state students with at least a 3.5 cumulative GPA, 25 ACT, or 1200 SAT can be eligible for these scholarships ranging from six $28,000 per year. But extracurriculars and leadership also matter. So if you're admitted to Alabama by January 15th, you'll have access to our scholarship application. This allows you to be considered for a variety of other competitive awards that do not require a test score. And Alabama education has no limits nor boundaries. From Warner Media to Mercedes Benz, the holistic opportunities for current students, such as internships and education abroad, are endless. We have almost a quarter of a million alumni and friends of the university, including those employed by companies like PepsiCo and Lockheed Martin. Our network is far reaching, local, national, and global. Students come to the University of Alabama from, over all, from all 50 states and over 70 different countries. 65% of our students report they are working full-time and 20% attend graduate school. 90% indicate positive career outcomes six months after graduation. UA has a reputation for innovation. The overall experience gives our students and graduates the skills and drive to accomplish incredible things. At Alabama, we are open for in-person tours. So we'd love to have you schedule a visit, come and see campus, if you can't get up there, we have more options than we've ever had before virtually. You can scan this QR code or watch any virtual session online, anything from admissions to engineering um, or in many of our other majors there. There's more resources there for you to learn more about the University of Alabama right from home. I do wanna encourage you all to reach out to me. I am your local regional recruiter. I live down here right in Fort Lauderdale and my job is I work just with my South Florida students. So whether you're visiting campus, ready to apply, wherever you are in that process, please reach out to me. I'm always happy to help. Thanks for joining us tonight and roll tide. Thanks, Cassie. All right, now we're going to move on to Valdosta State University. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen with everybody. Um, my name is Christine Rice, and I'm the South Florida admissions rep for VSU. Uh, Valdosta is a medium-sized public university in Georgia. We have about 12,500 students with 9,600 of them being undergrads. This past fall, we took in the biggest freshman class in the history of the university. We took in over 2,600 freshmen. So we have all the bells and whistles of a big state university just on a smaller scale, which enables you to really get to know your professors, and your fellow students, but you can still meet somebody new every day. We have over 100 majors to choose from. Our most popular are in the health sciences with biology and nursing, but criminal justice comes in at close number three. We have a very strong musical theater department. They put on six productions a year. Our education department is huge. Um, we are one of the few schools in the Southeast that has deaf education and American Sign Language interpretation. So we have kids from all over the country who come just for that, that major. <clears throat> we also have a planetarium on campus for our science majors and our astrology majors um, that not only benefits our students, but the local community as well. At Valdosta, the average class size is going to be about 23 in a class. So you're not going to have the big lecture halls with hundreds of students in them. And that is another reason why a lot of 
students will come to Valdosta because they want to be um, known well with their professors. So this really helps to get you to know everyone, have great access to them. There's a great team of people on campus that are willing to help inside and outside the classroom. We have peer tutoring, online tutoring, workshops, study sessions, uh, math labs, writing labs, all, all of that. We also have professional advisors who are not professors. So you are assigned an advisor um, based on your major and that advisor will follow you all four years while you're in school to make sure you're on track and you're gonna graduate on time and be ready for the next step in your education if you're getting an, another degree afterwards. We are a residential campus. There are eight different dorms on campus and upperclassmen have apartments as well. All freshmen reside on the campus the first year and you can bring a car if you would like to have one. We have suite style dorms and uh and traditional dorms as well the suite styles can either be you have a roommate and you share a bathroom with your next door neighbors there are some singles uh that this year we saved just in case we had a student get sick with covid we saved those singles but there will be available next year where you share a bathroom with your next door neighbor who also has a single and then the traditional dorms where you have a roommate and there's a common hall bathroom the great thing about those is that they get cleaned four or five times a day now and every all the products are there for you. You don't have to go out and buy anything. We do have some living and learning communities uh, for American Sign Language. Uh, the Honors College has their own dorm, Air Force ROTC, and there's also a wellness community for those students who take a holistic approach to a healthy lifestyle. <clears throat> we have over 200 clubs and organizations uh, on campus, including Greek life, academic organizations, religious organizations, intramural sports, music groups, just to name a few. We even have a Quidditch team uh, for you Harry Potter fans. <clears throat> the Recreation Center has a rock climbing wall, fitness classrooms, racquetball courts, swimming pool, cardio, weight rooms, and more. The Student Union uh, has a game room and a movie theater, lounge areas, and the typical food court with the Chick-fil-A, much needed, um, Moe's, Witch Witch, and Starbucks. We are a NCAA Division II school for athletics. We have six varsity sports for women and six for men. Uh, we have a very competitive uh, sports program and we've won many national championships in the Gulf South Conference. We've won four national titles in football for Div Division II and we have a 12 time cheer and dance national champions as well. There's so much to get involved in. We make it easy for you. So in the beginning of the school year, we have uh, the fall explosion where every day for the first three weeks, there is some event on campus so that students know what's going on and what they can get involved in, whether it be a sporting event or a concert or a theater production. At the end of those three weeks, we host what's called the big happening where clubs and organizations across campus and community vendors come out and show their support to the students and show them everything that they have to offer. So you can find friends, maybe get a job opportunity um, and just learn about what may spark your interest on campus. The city of Valdosta is about 55,000 residents and only three hours from Orlando and four hours from Atlanta. We have a theme park called Wild Adventures where every student gets a free yearly pass. And there's a downtown area with shops, restaurants, live entertainment, and there's even a mall. So if you're um, into adventure, there's a wildlife center and there's also a wake compound if you wanna go wakeboarding or even take lessons. As far as coming a blazer, we just need you to complete your application and send in your official high school transcripts. This year we were test optional as well uh, for 2021. And we are also hoping that we will not uh, bring that requirement back. So we are looking for a core GPA, minimum core GPA of a 2.6 as far as admission goes. Um, but if you do have ACT and SAT scores that you would like to send in, we will use those for scholarship opportunities. Um, those start at a 25 on the ACT or a 1250 on the SAT. We are on rolling admission. So once you apply, you'll know with, and we get your transcripts, we will know within 10 days uh, where your admissions stands. As far as cost goes, I do want to mention we give in-state tuition to Florida residents. So, and we do accept Florida prepaid. So this can be a great opportunity for you to go out of state, but not pay those out of state prices. You can get the in-state tuition. We are doing virtual tours daily and on-campus tours, but it's only one family at a time. 
So you can come and visit us uh, and make an appointment. That would be great. We would love to have you. Here's my contact information. I am located in Jupiter, so and I'm very close nearby. So it's a great day to be a blazer. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Next up, we have University of Min Mississippi. I almost said Minnesota. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> you are just fine. Hey, everybody. Get my PowerPoint pulled up as well. My name is Peyton Spear. I'm the Florida Regional Missions Counselor for the University of Mississippi. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I'm just going to run through my PowerPoint, briefly talk to you guys about Ole Miss today. Uh, just to start, uh, we have about 22,000 students on campus, 120 programs of study. Um, we are uh, have about an 86% retention rate, 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which is really nice. And we're the third smallest school in the SEC. So while we're in the SEC, a lot of big schools, we are the third smallest, which is really nice um, and something I enjoyed um, most about it. Um, we are named the most beautiful campus according to Newsweek and then the best college town uh, within Southern Living. So speaking of college town, I always like to kind of start out with talking about Oxford, the city of Oxford. So we're located on the north half of the state, just 60 miles south of Memphis, Tennessee is where we are. We have about 24,000 residents that live in Oxford. So if you think about that number with the amount of undergraduate students, pretty much we double the size of the town uh, in fall and the spring, which is really exciting. So it's a way for everybody uh, just to embrace the university for what it is. Uh, we were founded in 1848. We're known for our um, art, music, literature. As you guys can see, William Faulkner, um, famous English writer, is a resident of Oxford. John Grisham attended our law school. And something neat as well, if you guys see that red double-decker bus in the middle of the screen at the bottom, we were named after Oxford, England, which is really cool. And so they gave us, uh, they donated two buses to our, our town. So if you guys ever get a chance to visit, you can actually take a tour around Oxford uh, within those double-decker buses. And something I always like to mention, if I can prove to you that the town meant anything to me at all, uh, my golden retriever who we have uh, is named Oxford. So it was a special place for sure. But heading down uh, University Avenue onto campus, some student life and tradition. We have over 300 student organizations on campus, tons and tons of ways to get involved. I always say no matter where you guys end up attending, um, it's a great way to really kind of get to know fellow classmates. So definitely get involved once you guys get on campus right away, but Ole Miss, lots of ways to do so. Speaking of academics, um, again, over 120 um, uh, majors that we have, lots of areas of study as well. But just to touch on a few, our school of pharmacy is top 25 in the nation, general studies major, if you're kind of undecided, uh, school of journalism and new media, Patterson School of Accountancy is top 10 in the nation. Our College of Liberal Arts is our largest college just because it offers so much. You guys can see everything from art all the way to sociology. School of Business Administration, we have our School of Applied Sciences, School of Education, School of Engineering. One thing I'll talk about is our pre-professional areas that you guys see on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. So whether you want to be a physical therapist or, you know, dentist, whatever it may be, those pre-professional tracks. On campus, a nice resource that we offer is a health profession advising office. This office is great. They're really there. They're designed just for our, our, our pre-med students, if you will, um, to assist with test prep, interview prep, and placement as well. My wife, who I met at Ole Miss, is a physical therapist now, but she took advantage of that program. They were able to get her right into PT school. So she knew where she was going even before she uh, finished her undergrad. So really nice, just a really good resource. Some special programs that we offer. This is what you, you can apply into these programs on top of your kind of general studies we offer an Arabic. We're an Arabic flagship and a Chinese flagship institution, which we're really proud of. Center for Intelligence and Security Studies, if anybody's interested in FBI, CIA type of work. We have an early entry program into our, our pharmacy school. We have our Mississippi Excellence in Teaching program. For any of you guys that want to go into education, this is a great program. It's competitive to get into, but if you're able to get into the program and you're willing to teach five years within the state of Mississippi once you graduate, all of your tuition, housing, book, everything's covered while you're a student at Ole Miss. So in a way, we like to say it's like the biggest major that we offer. Uh, we also have our Sally McDonald Barksdale Honors College, our Trent Lott Lead Leadership Institute for Public Policy, 
And then we have our Center for Manufacturing Excellence as well. Center for Manufacturing Excellence, it's a 12,000 square foot facility. Um, it's houses, it's home to our engineering students. Also, it's good for our business students and our accounting students who wanna go into the engineering world within business or accounting. Um, basically, it has multi-million dollar equipment inside. So just a way to kind of get your hands on for whatever you're looking to do within that world of engineering. Uh, big companies come in, Mississippi is a big automotive um, state, big Toyota plants within the state. So a lot of CEOs will come in and speak. Just a really good thing to have on your resume once you go to graduate. Some campus resources we offer, some great dining, just like the other schools have mentioned. Um, we have recreation. We have two recreation centers on campus now. I'm really jealous. When I was a student, we just had one. We just built our second South Campus Recreation Center. Rockwall, you can see the gentleman on the top right, uh, Rockwall climbing. If you guys are familiar with Orange Theory, uh, we kind of have our own Orange Theory um, circuit training within that South Campus Recreation Center as well. Student Disability Services Health Center, of course, important right now, all complimentary to as a student, and then a career center on campus as well. Schools are going to have their own career center um, to assist, you know, business school has their own, but there's a career center as a whole for the university that you can attend to as well. And what's nice with us having, you know, the amount of students that we have, it's great when you go to use these resources because there's not a ton of other students you're kind of competing with to get that one on one attention. So cost of attendance you'll see located in the middle of the screen. About 80% of our students do receive some type of financial aid. You know, we have scholarship opportunities um, and then we are ranked uh, top 50 in the nation for, for uh, best public university for value. We have our academic merit scholarships as well based off of GPA test score. And then the last thing I'll mention, just because I know my time's running out, is next steps to take our application does open up on July 1st. This year, we were not requiring a test score for admissions purposes. Not sure if that's going to hold true moving forward. Hopefully it will. But all we need is your paid application. We need your high school transcript. And for right now, let's just say that we need a test score as well to be submitted for admissions purposes and the academic merit or any competitive scholarships we have. But to wrap it up, there's my contact information there for you. We are open for visits as well. If you just visit um, olmiss.edu slash visits, uh, we're offering in person. So if you need me for anything at all, that's my contact information. Do not hesitate to reach out. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Peyton. Next up, we have University of Tennessee, Knoxville. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Hospodar, and I am the Regional Admissions Representative for the University of Tennessee. I am based in Orlando, so I'm happy to support all of you all and to be here today to talk about our institution. So to get started, the University of Tennessee is located directly in the city of Knoxville. I always like to start by talking about our location because I really think it's the best of both worlds for our students. They are on a residential campus, but they are also within steps of the downtown area of Knoxville where there are a ton of amazing arts and culture events and theaters and things of that nature, um, as well as professional opportunities. Then at the same time, we are also close to a ton of amazing outdoor activities as well. Uh, the Tennessee River runs along the front of our campus. We're about 40 minutes from the Great Smoky Mountains. So in terms of a campus or a, a local experience, you have a lot of opportunities to enjoy both the city as well as the outdoors. Uh, we do also have an airport directly in Knoxville, about 15 minutes from campus. So in terms of making that trip uh, from Knoxville to home here in Florida, you definitely have easy access to do that. Looking at our campus community, we are really ideally located and situated directly next to that downtown area, like I mentioned. But there is still a really clear campus footprint. So when students are on campus, you know that you're at the University of Tennessee. It's very walkable. You can get to class, the student union, the library, your residence hall within about five minutes typically. Uh, so it's a really great place to call home in that sense. We do have about 23,000 undergraduate students. So as far as state schools go, we're kind of middle of the pack size wise. And again, I think that's a great blend for our students. We're able to offer a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different options from over 360 majors to division one club and intramural sports and many other things. 
uh, where we're able to really cut that size down and allow students to really build their community within the UT community and make their UT experience theirs. Academically, we do have nine different undergraduate colleges with the first four listed here. I'll let you just take a moment to uh, review that list. I won't talk about each program individually, uh, but what I will encourage you to do is visit our website for more information on all of these programs. And then we have the last five here. At UT, across all of our majors, I think we really try and focus on bringing that experiential learning element into the classroom. So if you're taking a class in the College of Business, you might also be working with one of our local Knoxville businesses and helping them with a marketing plan or helping them solve a problem. Uh, you might also be getting involved in undergraduate research or taking advantage of opportunities to connect with um, internships and co-ops. So there's always that added layer that you're bringing to that academic experience. Outside of the classroom, we offer a lot of amazing resources to help set students up for success. And I think at this point, it's always good for me to mention that our students are the volunteers um, or the vols. And I think that's really representative of what the UT student experience is like. Our students want to be leaders on campus. They want to make an impact. They want to be successful. So they're taking advantage of the different resources that they have from career development, uh, center to our leadership office and so on. We do have over 600 clubs and organizations. So there's a lot of different routes you can take. And again, it's very much about the individual student, uh, but all of those opportunities really allow for that size to, to shrink and for campus to feel like home and a community for our students. Looking at our application process, students are able to apply to UT either through our website or through the Common App. We don't prefer one method over the other. It's whatever's best for you. And you can see here a list of what we look for in our application with the options that are italicized being optional. For our review process, it is very holistic. So we're looking at academic factors like GPA, um, the classes that you've taken throughout high school, how you've challenged yourself, but we're also balancing that with who you are outside of the classroom and sort of that volunteer spirit I mentioned. So we wanna know what you're involved in. We wanna know what you're passionate about. There really is no magic formula. It's really about getting that sense for uh, what matters to you and how you've been able to contribute to those areas, both academically and outside of the classroom. Uh, for this last application cycle, we were also test optional. Uh, we are still waiting to make that final determination for this upcoming fall, uh, but I think odds are good that we would have a test optional option for our students. Uh, those students did complete an additional essay. You'll also see on the bottom of this slide that we have a few competitive programs. So as you consider applying to UT, just know that there would be some additional criteria for those programs. Uh, we have a November 1st priority deadline and a December 15th regular deadline. I encourage every student to apply by our November 1st deadline, one, because you do hear back a bit earlier, but also because that will allow you to be considered for our honors programs and our competitive scholarships. Uh, so that really puts you in the best place for full consideration. And then lastly, I encourage you to visit us. We have a ton of amazing virtual options. You can chat with students. Our individual colleges do their own info sessions. And then we have our own uh, tour and info session as well, as well as live visits. Uh, so I thank you all for your time. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks, Stephanie. And last but not least, we have West Virginia University. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, my name is Madeline Ryan and I am your regional recruiter from West Virginia University. And I'm joined by my colleague, Cassandra Smith, who is going to be answering any of your questions in the chat box today. 
So West Virginia University is actually part of a university system. So we have three distinct campuses across the state of West Virginia, and they each have different admissions offices, different major offers, um, and uh, different campus environments. So we really encourage you to connect with the counselors at each of the campuses and learn a little bit more. Um, but we actually have our West Virginia University Institute of Technology in Beckley, West Virginia. So this is really great for students who are interested in competitive engineering and STEM programs, but maybe want a smaller campus than our Morgantown campus. And we have our West Virginia University Potomac State College in Kaiser, West Virginia. So it is the smallest of the three. Um, many students can go and earn an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, and then they later have the opportunity to transfer to either our Beckley or our Morgantown campus after completing those degrees. And last, we have our flagship campus in Morgantown, which is the largest of the three campuses with over 380 majors across undergraduate, graduate, and professional schools. Um, and the rest of the presentation today will be about our Morgantown campus. So where is Morgantown? We're actually located in North Central West Virginia. So about three hours from Washington DC and then six hours from New York. Um, so if you're gonna be flying into campus, you're actually gonna fly into the Pittsburgh airport. And then it's just a, a 70 mile drive south through, the Pittsburgh, through Pittsburgh into Morgantown. Um, so we actually have 27,000 students from all 50 states and 118 different countries on campus. And we um, are actually majority non-residents. So about 55% of our students are coming from outside of West Virginia. We do recognize the importance in having a diverse and inclusive campus community. So we're continuing to have ongoing campus climate conversations with our students, faculty and staff, um, our alumni, so that we can make sure that all students feel like their voice is welcomed um, and it is a safe space. We are um, one of the top three, we are ranked in the top 3% of universities nationwide. And our students can often be found um, being hired by one of the top Fortune 500 companies, that you, some of them you see list, listed there. They are going on to be Fulbright, Truman, or Rhodes Scholars, or they're going on and completing graduate and professional studies. So we um, are also really proud to be one of 130 R1 research institutions ranked by the Carnegie Foundation. So this allows students to conduct research um, in both the STEM and non-STEM fields, and students can begin conducting research even the summer before their freshman year. Um, Hands-on learning, experiential learning is really important to us as well. So other opportunities include um, completing 1,100 clinical hours at our Ruba Memorial Hospital that you see pictured there. It's a level one trauma center hospital. You can see some of the simulation laboratories. Our students are studying abroad in over 50 different countries. So you could do a two-week program, semester long, or full academic year. And then you see, um, this is a photo from our robotics um, student project team, but we have several student project teams where students can also work with faculty experts in the field and get some of those hands-on learning. We also have the largest crime scene training complex in the country. Um, so for students that are interested in forensic science, criminology, this will be a great training facility for you. So Morgantown um, is really a truly a college town with a small city feel. So we're located in the mountains, surrounded by rivers. So really great opportunities for students who are interested in maybe camping, canoeing, hiking, whitewater rafting through our program called Adventure West Virginia. Um, then you can also participate in over 485 student organizations. So social, cultural, pre-professional, there really is something for everyone on campus. And then our students have a lot of school spirit. So um, you can often hear and feel that Mountaineer pride. Um, our students are cheering on 18 NCAA Division I um, student athletes across our Big 12, um, within the Big 12 conference. So I'll help you learn a little bit more about our admissions process. We do have um, rolling admissions. So the application opens the August before the start of your senior year. Um, we do not require essays or letters of recommendation and they're not going to be considered. So we're gonna look at your academic preparation, how well you've done in your ninth 
through 11th grade semesters. You can always send in your updated transcript after the fall semester of your senior year and your GPA and or test score will be required for direct admission into your major of interest. So we did adopt a test optional policy this year. Um, we're looking to make this a permanent change. I know several other institutions mentioned the same thing. So please do um, check out the links that Cassie has shared in the chat box to find out updated information for the fall 2020 uh, cohorts. And then our students are able to choose between one of 14 schools and colleges when they're considering admission into their major as an incoming freshman. So you can start in your nursing classes first semester of your freshman year. Um, you can start in Reed College of Media if you're interested in the sports sciences or media majors. Often a lot of our students will double major or add on a minor. So you also have that flexibility. Some of our unique majors are listed here. Um, I am running short on time, but we'll be happy to speak with you a little bit more about them. And we do have ways to connect virtually. So we have, if you go to admissions.wvu.edu slash visit, or if you can scan that QR code there, um, you can learn about all of our in-person and virtual uh, programming and tour options. Um, we have an open house coming up and I am your admissions counselor. Once again, my name is Madeline Ryan, so I'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you have. Let's go Mountaineers. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. So I'm going to ask all the reps to come back on screen and just uh, put your video on. I'm going to ask one question because we have about five minutes left of this session. Um, so let me just share that question real quick with you. So the question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? We're going to answer in the order that we presented in. Um, so feel free to take it away. So I'm actually going to let our student Kylie answer this one. Hey, everybody. So I'm a junior at FSU. And I'd probably say some of my favorite events and traditions are our athletic events. Uh, and just attending these events with complete strangers that I may have never encountered on campus and simultaneously doing the war chant. It's like you become best friends just in that moment. Even if we're losing, it's still a great experience. Um, that's probably one of my favorite things. And one of the others I would say is simply just walking around campus and automatically feeling this sense of community and family on campus. And I'm going to give a very um, expected response. My favorite thing at the University of Alabama, um, I would absolutely say it's fall in Tuscaloosa um, and everything that it encompasses. Um, absolutely football, but also I live down here in South Florida, so I really love seeing the leaves change on campus and appreciate that so much more. And this year I learned not only do I miss being in the stadium for football games, but tailgating is really probably the highlight um, of that for me. So tailgating um, on the quad next to the stadium while the fall leaves are changing colors um, around us. That definitely what I miss the most and one of my favorite things. Well, I would have to say um, the happening, which I talked about, uh, I think it's a great event for the freshmen when they're first getting there where everyone comes out onto the lawn, all the clubs and organizations and community people and kids are able to see what we have to offer and what they're able to get involved in. We really want you to get involved on campus and not be sitting in your room by yourself. We want you to be a part of the community. So I think that's a great way for them, for us to show them what they can do and be a part of. So that's my favorite part. Casey said it well, same thing with Ole Miss. Um, seems cliche, I know, but truly, it, as a student came all the way from California, um, going to a school like Ole Miss, that was kind of how I was introduced to kind of what the whole culture was about. Um, and and uh, we have a grove on campus, which sits right in the middle of campus, kind of the, the same architect who designed Central Park also designed the grove, which is really cool. So um, tailgating happens there before game days. Um, in the fall. So um, I think that's a really nice tradition. And all freshmen, first home football game every year, get to run across the field for a uh, rebel run, they call it. So um, I think that was kind of, that was my favorite tradition um, while I was at Ole Miss. That was Virginia. Oh. Oops, so sorry. That's okay. Um, so I think for me at UT, uh, something that is my favorite tradition, also kind of a favorite spot on campus is uh, what's known as the rock. We have 
an appropriately named a giant boulder that we call the rock on our campus. But I think what makes it special is students will, at whenever they like, they can go and spray paint the rock and decorate it. So we see a lot of that um, surrounding football games uh, to bring football into it. <laughs> uh, but we see a lot of just cool uh, moments, cool opportunities for the community to come together, awesome art. Uh, that's displayed there. We've even seen marriage proposals. So it's just a, a cool place to look on campus and uh, something that's kind of special. Sorry, Stephanie, I was excited, but it actually is very fitting for what I was about to describe. I was about to describe our Mountaineer Week. So this is a great week where our students, um, the Morgantown and just larger WVU community comes together. They have a lot of great spirit, um, really great energy. Um, we're really excited to celebrate um, WVU, both the past and the present. Um, and one of the favorite traditions is our PRT cram. So our the PRT is our monorail system or the small tram that gets you across campus. So students actually pile in and the class of 2000, they were able to get 97 students into one of the small cars. So every year, the incoming class has to try to beat that, um, re the reigning class. So right now it's 97 students, um, but just that entire week, like I said, uh, students are coming together with the larger community and really enjoying um, their time together. I always love hearing campus traditions. I feel like that's like the essence of every school. So thank you so much for sharing um, a little bit about that. So we are at the end of our webinar tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. When you close this window, you will see a quick survey pop up. Please fill that out and sign up for more sessions and there will be a recording available. So have a great night. Thanks everyone. <laughs>